So welcome to Camp Morton Provincial Park. Uh, it's a lovely place on the shores of uh, Lake Winnipeg. Uh, it's a gorgeous day, uh, nice and sunny, about 24 degrees centigrade, I believe, Celsius. Um, can't complain, not too much wind, the water's calm. And I'm out here because I'm on uh, uh, the second day of a uh, photo shoot uh, in Camp Morton Provincial Park. What I've done, what I'm doing is I'm taking pictures of the remnants of what was once a, uh, a summer camp uh, set up by the Catholic Church um, under Father Morton. Uh, this was back in the 1920s, I believe it was established. Uh, and it's long since um, abandoned, disappeared. It's been taken over by the provincial park, now serves as a provincial park. But in the meantime, there's still a lot of artifacts from uh, the uh, Camp Morton days, uh, which it, they intrigue me uh, not so much because of their architectural prowess, but uh, just because of their, their sort of like a very vernacular style of architecture. They were, they were all hand-built structures. And slowly over time, they, they're also starting to disintegrate and disappear. Uh, Lake Winnipeg is pretty calm right now, but it can get quite vicious and the entire shoreline here, it can get quite hammered uh, by, uh, by the winds and ice uh, during the winter time. So anyways, that's sort of the, uh, the background for, for the, uh, the camp. Uh, what I wanted to do is to capture the, uh, again, those disintegrating artifacts, a lot of which are scattered along the beach here and some are further inland. Um, the, Provincial Parks uh, branch is trying to preserve them to some extent, but uh, they have limited resources and slowly they are disappearing, uh, disintegrating. So uh, I just find it quite intriguing, that, uh, that whole idea of, uh, of something that was uh, from the 1920s, a very happy period, now sort of just a, quite a, a faint memory. And so I'm looking at those stones and remnants as part of that faint memory. It occurred to me, like I haven't worked in black and white for a long time since I went digital really. Uh, before that from about 19, well geez, about 1970s all the way up until about uh, the year 2000, I was working pretty much exclusively in black and white and then switched over when I went digital into color pretty exclusively. Uh, so, but now I'm all of a sudden I'm into Polaroid um, uh, as of the start of the pandemic and in, along the way I discovered the Polaroid black and white film uh, and I've been experimenting with that over the time. The, there's two versions, there's the Polaroid black and white SX70 which is a slower ISO 6, 160 speed and there's also the faster uh, Polaroid uh, 600 which has the uh, 640 ISO, nominal ISO. And I found them quite wonderful. I love the tones of the of the of the uh, of the the blacks and the whites. Uh, when you first develop them, the they they come out and they uh, well. First of all, when you when you when you take your picture and you're developing them, they're a lot faster than with the color materials. Uh, you can pretty much look at a picture after about five minutes, uh, dark expo dark uh, coverage, and get a good idea of what your picture is. Is, is going to look like. Uh, certainly 10 minutes is, gives you a, a, a really solid idea what the picture is going to look like. But then what happens is you take a look at the pictures, the tones at that point are a fairly neutral white and black, but over several days, several weeks, I haven't quite determined what, uh, the, the tones take on a slight um, warmish tone, uh, which is quite nice, quite, quite love them. And I also find that the, the uh, the material seems to hold the shadows quite nicely. I'm quite enjoying it. Um, what else can I say? I'm also, uh, uh, just like when I was doing my black and white work back in the 70s to 80s, 90s, uh, I was using large format cameras to a large extent and I would be using uh, filters like my, uh, my yellow, my orange, occasionally my red filter just to bring out the qualities especially qualities in brickwork for example or in and warmer materials in trees and trunks and what have you they also it adds a, a certain depth and quality and I'm finding that for a lot of my work I'm using an orange filter pretty much like I used 
quite constantly when I was doing my black and white work in in past past years. So that's what I'm doing, and and you can see here that I have my camera, my Mint camera. That's what I'm using for this particular series. I of course have my variable neutral density filter, which I'm using quite a bit just to control the exposures, get that half exposure difference, and it, it really really does come in quite a bit of handy. And I'm also in my little pouch here. I carry my orange filter as well, which I, I will put on for a lot of my pictures that I'm taking right here in black and white. So that's how I'm working. Um, I'm using a tripod uh, so that I set up my picture, uh, I get it, get it uh, composed correctly, figure out my exposure, I will take a picture, wait for the five minutes, ten minutes, just to see what the picture looks like, and if necessary then I, I'll go back and take a picture. So it's not a, it's not a, I'm not taking a picture and dashing off. Uh, I'm, I'm actually spending some time here, which is again harkens back to the days when I was using my 4x5 uh, cameras in film. Uh, you pretty much had to just settle down, set up your camera, take your picture. It was a, it was a, it's a slow process, but in a way, it's a very nice process. Basically, you almost feel like you're becoming a part of whatever scene that you're photographing. In this case, you know, it's quite leisurely. I can sit out on this beach. There's pretty much. There's no one here right now, which is kind of strange considering how nice a day it is. Uh, and it's Friday as well. But I've got this whole beach for myself so I can take my picture. I can afford to wait for the, for the um, ten, uh, five to ten minutes for the picture to develop and then take another picture. It's just a very relaxing, um, energy, energizing kind of experience. So anyways, I would highly recommend uh, trying, trying that kind of approach. Now. The other thing I'm going to mention is that I've also been, because of the vagaries of of of, uh, of SX film, the you know this film speed can vary. Uh, it says right on the package, a plus or minus one third f-stop or one third EV, either above or below the uh, rated film speed. So what I'm doing just to um, make sure I'm zeroing in on the correct exposure is that every time I put in a new pack, I'm also uh, taking a picture of a small gray card that I carry around with me. Wait for it to develop, put it beside the gray card itself in the same light and see how close a match they are. And if they're a close match, then that means I can use that, uh, the ISO that the film is rated at. It happens to be a little bit di darker or lighter then I might uh, change the, uh, my, my setting on my meter. Now, as far as my meter is concerned, I'm also, of course, using my uh, Pentax Spot Meter 5, uh, very reliable. Again, this, this is a piece of um, equipment that goes back to the 1970s for me. That's how long I've had this thing. It still works quite wonderfully. And uh, certainly, if, you're, if you've been looking at my posts uh, regarding the zone system, uh, then you'll be quite familiar with uh, this, this meter. Anyways, I think that's it for now I'm going to sit back and got my got my egg salad sandwich I got my rice crispy square and my water I'm gonna have a nice little lunch and then I'm going to continue taking more pictures uh, along the shoreline and inland in uh, Camp Morton